Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today, I am bringing to you one of the new latest and greatest DIYs that seems to be all of the rage right now. What is that? Hot cocoa bombs. Yeah, you heard me right. I said hot cocoa bombs. Not bath bombs, but hot cocoa bombs. And boy, oh boy, are these things so much fun, so easy to do, and I had so much fun doing them. Allie saw these, and when she brought them to me, I was so excited because I had everything I needed to do them, and I knew that it was gonna be pretty easy to do. So I can't wait to show you how quick, easy, and most of all, budget-friendly it is to make a hot cocoa bomb. And the more you make, the cheaper it is, and what a fun gift to give this holiday season. Let's make some hot cocoa bombs. There's a couple different ways to do this. I picked up this silicone mold off of Amazon, only I didn't realize it was as small as it was until I got it. Then I realized I had these bath bomb molds that came in my Simply Earth uh, essential oil kit. And so I decided that I was gonna try these because these were a bigger mold. The candy melts that I'll be using are one of two. You can get these candy melts by Wilton. And since I had the light chocolate and the dark chocolate already on hand, and with these other Wilton ones, these are ones you can get at Michael's. I'm using the white chocolate and the red, and I do believe I'll be using a green as well. These are really easy to work with just by placing them in a microwave safe bowl. Put them in the bowl, and we're gonna heat these up in 30 second increments in the microwave, stirring after each 30 seconds to really mix up the chocolate, get that melted part moved around because you don't want one area to get a bit hotter than the other because then your chocolate kind of turns into powder. After the first 30 seconds, you can see that not much happened, but you still want to move those chocolates around just to even out how it's going to melt down. It took me a total of two minutes, I want to say, to get my chocolate like this. And you can see that there are some bumps, but if you just kind of Take your spoon and blend it in. The chocolate is hot enough that it will disperse those bumps. Now, because these are a bath bomb mold, I was a little bit worried about the chocolate sticking, so I figured I'd put just a bit of vegetable oil on a napkin and just coat the inside of the molds before I put the chocolate in. Now, when putting the chocolate in, you wanna put about a spoonful in there and I just start off by putting the spoonful in the bottom of the mold and just kind of swiping up from the center all the way around the mold. Now, you don't want your chocolate to be too thin, but you also don't want it to be too thick. So I would say a good medium coverage of chocolate is good. The thickness should be about medium and you want to go as high up on the mold as you can onto those edges because those edges will crack and so you don't want them to crack and again you want those edges to be thick too this is not perfect but this is gonna work this is exactly what it should look like i'm gonna stick these in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes and they're gonna harden pretty quickly when using the silicone mold you're gonna do the same thing only you don't need to grease it because it's silicone and it's gonna come out fairly easily and i really did find that using a spoon was the easiest way I'm not sure what kind of spoon this is. I think it's a soup spoon because the edge is a bit different than a regular teaspoon. I loved the way this one worked. It worked really well. And so again, I'm gonna go ahead and fill all six of these molds or cover all six of these molds with the white chocolate. And these two are going to find a place in my refrigerator just to speed up that drying and hardening process. This will dry and harden if it's not in the fridge, but I tell you, it only takes about 10 minutes. Once they're good and hard, just by simply putting a little bit of pressure and wiggling these, it'll come right out of the mold. And you really wanna be careful with those edges 
If they're not perfect right now, don't worry because we're going to fix that. But for the most part, we got this out in a hole. So that is what we're aiming for. And so you can see again, you're going to go ahead and just kind of slide it right out of the mold. And these bath bomb molds worked perfectly. They're not a perfect sphere because there is that flat part, but I'm not worried. To clean up the edges on the balls that we just took out of the molds, I'm going to be using this candle warmer plate and just a regular clear glass plate that I got at the Dollar Tree. I found that this was the perfect temperature. It was warm to touch, but it didn't burn my hand. And it was warm enough to actually, you can see that it's melting my sphere down, the half sphere. Now when you place this on the plate, you want to rotate it and you'll see that all the rough edges melt down and you get perfect edges. To fill my hot cocoa bombs, I'm going to be using some Swiss Miss Mint Hot Chocolate in the packet because, again, it's what I have on hand. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill the one half that I already cleaned up the edges. You don't want to fill it too high. I'm also going to add some sprinkles. These are sprinkles from my hot cocoa bar. I thought it would be fun to add these to the hot cocoa as well. What's great about this is you can really get creative and you can really customize it to suit your liking or whomever's liking that you're gifting these to if you're gonna gift them. And so I thought some sprinkles and some of the red sugar would be adorable. I'm gonna take the other half of the sphere, the top part, I'm gonna melt that down and clean up those edges. And before it melts, I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the other half, closing this up. So that way when it dries and hardens, it sticks together. Now, if you see that you have a ring of chocolate around the outside, go ahead with your clean hand and just kind of wipe it off and it'll smooth it out. With the silicone molds, it's a bit easier to remove them because it stretches so you can go ahead and separate and pull apart those molds and your pieces will pop right out. Again, you can see that my edges are not perfect, but don't worry about it. Don't try to fix them now or even them out because when you melt them down on that plate, it'll take care of that. I will tell you that in some of the videos that I saw for this, people were using a pan on the stove. I initially tried that and I ended up burning my fingertips and I found that the chocolate was turning brown. It was just a lot harder. I think that if you don't have a melting plate like I do for a candle, stick a plate in the microwave for just about a minute or two just to warm it up and that'll be enough just to kind of melt down those edges of your spheres. And be careful, don't drop it because you might melt it. I'm going to do three of the spheres right now that were in the silicone molds. I'm not going to do the other three yet because those are the tops. And with these three, I decided that since they were a smaller sphere, that it would be fun just to kind of add some fun things that you would want to add to your hot cocoa. So maybe you've got a cup of hot cocoa and you want to add to it. And so I thought that maybe crushing up some of these candy canes with a rolling pin. I Again, I had these on hand and so it was just easier just to use what I had. And this is going to work perfect. Take those candy canes and crush them. Then just simply pour it in to your half spheres here. Get creative with these. Make them fun. I think that these are such fun little toppings to add. Adding the candy canes, maybe add some marshmallows. Allie really likes the freeze-dried marshmallows, but I thought that since these were the peppermint, I would add some of the pink sugar to go with it. And on this one, I'm going to add some green sugar. Oh, and let's add some sprinkles too. Why not? You can buy these freeze-dried marshmallows a couple of different ways. I know that some of the stores in my area don't carry them year-round, but you can find these freeze-dried marshmallows by Kraft or even Jet Puff, or I guess it is Jet Puffed by Kraft. And so this is a decent sized bottle. You can get it for about $3. Allie loves these marshmallows and her hot cocoa. She likes them so much better than the regular marshmallows. Once you've got all the toppings in your sphere, your half sphere, one side of your sphere that you're happy with, you're gonna go ahead and melt the other half down, get those edges nice and clean, and just go ahead and close up your hot cocoa topping ball bomb. Yeah, how fun are these? I think that these are such fun little treats and really they are so stinking easy to do and so budget friendly. You can just buy white chocolate if you wanted to 
and you can color it with food coloring, those candy bags are maybe $2 a bag at Michael's, Joann's, Walmart. They're not very expensive at all. And so I think that this is such a fun little treat and a cute gift to give those little ones this Christmas. Now, as these hot cocoa bombs are super cool, just being hot cocoa bombs all on their own, we've got to dress these up a bit and add some embellishments to them. And an easy way to do that is to use some of the colored chocolates. I have the red and the green. I melted it down and just by taking a spoon, you can drizzle it over the top of your bomb. You want to make sure your chocolate isn't too hot though because you don't want to melt the shell down. You want to let it set out a little bit. Don't do this right out of the microwave. Once we've got it nice and drizzled on there, I think you could add some sprinkles to it. You could add some green sugar. I just wanted to add a little bit of sparkle to it. You can really get creative with these. That's the fun part of this is with some chocolate and hot cocoa and sprinkles, you could really have a lot of fun with these. Because I had a bunch of red left over, I decided I was going to make some red ones too. And I'm going to tell you from start to finish, I think melting down the chocolate and filling my spears up or my molds up and cooling it down, it only took me 20 minutes, which was really not bad at all. I would say all in all, doing these is going to take you maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Because I had so much chocolate, I had the green, the red, the white, I decided just to really have fun with it. And I think I sat in the kitchen for a couple of hours making several different colors. And so with the green, I'm using my leftover white chocolate just to add some drizzles to this. And this is one of the larger bath bombs. I will say that there is a bit of a learning curve to this. And I started to realize that as the chocolate was thickening up or cooling off, it was harder to drizzle. You want that chocolate not to be too hot, but enough that it drizzles off the spoon. So as you move the spoon over your sphere, it makes those nice thin drizzle lines instead of the thick ones. Okay, so I'm gonna quit my Gabin and I'm gonna show you how these work in this adorable frosty mug that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now we make our hot cocoa with milk. If you wanna use water, you can. I warmed my milk up in the microwave for two minutes. Allie begged me not to use this chocolate one. This is what I was originally gonna show you. So I'm gonna use the green one and save the chocolate for her. And just by dropping your hot cocoa bomb into your hot, warm milk, you're gonna see that it starts to melt, it starts to break apart, and if you just simply take a spoon and give it a little bit of a stir, it's going to bring your hot cocoa to life and you are going to have a scrumptious cup of hot chocolate. And in this case, it was the peppermint inside of it. I had the peppermint bits, I had some sprinkles, I had the mint hot cocoa, and the mint and the peppermint was so yummy together. And that candy chocolate, can I just tell you, this tastes amazing. Now to gift these, I'm using these tin containers that the Dollar Tree had. How stinking cute is this? And I placed one of the larger hot cocoa bombs inside one and I added a topping to match. I thought that this would be a perfect fun little gift. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna gift it this way. I'm gonna show you how you can gift them, but I really wanted to show you how fun these are and how creative you can get with adding different colors and just really, I think the chocolate was Allie's favorite, but really these are a lot of fun. And if you are going to gift these, I do suggest wrapping them in saran wrap or Dollar Tree has these Ziploc baggies that you can wrap each of them in before you put them in the tin. I told you, quick, easy, and budget-friendly is an understatement. How fun are these? They are so cute, 
And I'm gonna sound like a broken record. What an amazing gift to give. I think anybody who receives this is absolutely gonna love it because not only is it yummy, but it's super fun. The whole idea of it is fun. I hope you all enjoyed today's hot cocoa bomb DIY. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and bye for now.